Greetings. I was uh, planning to do a series based on a request on on what makes a good sword, but I figure I'd uh, I'd start with this because I don't I don't see a lot of videos on these products. Um, Musashi Silver Series, what I consider a really good entry level practitioner's katana, and I do have a couple of examples to look at. This is also another example uh, going back to my video on Spanish made swords. Um, the blessing of being a martial artist in this era versus back in the 70s or 80s and what we had to settle for almost, almost anything you get today that's made by a decent manufacturer is so much better than what was out back then in terms of usability but what you get in a, a silver series sword the msrp is run from 200 to 150 on their website but uh, you know actual retail you're probably going to find it for a lot less and uh, maybe just you know somewhere between 100 and 125 bucks and for that you get surprisingly a lot of sword uh, for your money if you're just looking for something for for martial arts practice and things like that um, this this is the classic this is uh, the musashi musashi um, and the reason it is that is because it's got that classic double lobe guard on it we'll talk about that in a minute but what you tend to get out of these swords is a uh, a grip that has a really nice geometry to it. It's got a slight taper. It feels pretty good in the hand. The uh, Ito, the wrapping is usually a, a cotton that, that's kind of fuzzy looking, but you know, even though it's not terribly attractive, it, it feels it feels good, especially if you're going to be whacking stuff with it, uh, doing a lot of cutting or a lot of other work with it. it it's going to be comfortable in the hand and it's not going to get slippery. It's also pretty tight. It doesn't move around. Underneath it, you do get real ray skin. Now the fixtures tend to be just uh, cheap casting with uh, with a paint job over the top, so nothing nothing spectacular there. Some of them actually have brass. This is an example of just uh, just basic painted uh, die cast pieces. Now the interesting thing on this one, um, one thing I like about it, and one thing I hate about it. One thing I hate about it is the uh, Musashi guard is a very plain stamping, and it's very thin. It's only about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. It feels like it would be kind of flimsy. But, believe it or not, my trusty magnet, that is that is real iron, believe it or not, or at least an iron alloy. And it's pretty tough. I've uh, I put it to a little bit of abuse to see if it would just, like, chip up and, and peel off or bend or whatever. And it's actually... It's pretty tough. Uh, also, taking the sword apart and just general use, it's, it's on there really tight, so they did a, a really good job with that. Um, the rest of the sword, what you usually get is a basic uh, wooden scabbard, and it's just piano lacquer, just black, which is a fingerprint magnet, and you know nothing fancy in the fittings. It has a fairly nice little basic corrugata with the, with the gold sheet of dome and the... Uh, the Segeo, where it's just leftover cord wrap from the handle, leftover Ito, so nothing terribly, terribly great there. Um, the scabbard itself is, uh, it's got this interesting little black plastic ring around the scabbard mouth, which I, I think is for reinforcement. I've never had one of these split, like uh, Saya from other manufacturers that I'll mention in other reviews. And the fit with the... Uh, the hibaki is it's decent it's not super tight it'll it'll fall out if you turn it over it's it's snug enough to stay put for a lot of your practice but also be fairly quick on the draw and easy on the release uh doesn't really rattle in in the saya so that's that's a decent fit so that's not too bad uh, moving on to the blade in this particular version um I'll show another example here in a second, but there have been some improvements to the Musashi line over the, over the decades. Uh, basic brass hibaki, and then the blade itself has really nice geometry. It's about a 28 inch blade. You've got about 11 and a half inch ha handle on there. Um, you do have the proper surfaces. You got the proper peak mune. Uh, this one has a pretty nice groove in it, and lo and behold, the um, the Hammond, see if I can get in here and see it, is it's real. How do you tell it's real? Well, etched ones are just comically, uh, comically fake looking. They're just they're just too perfect. This one has that that cloudy, hazy midline in it that kind of gives it away. And if you you know you really wanted to, you can test the hardness of parts of your swords. That usually requires a little bit of destruction in the process, but. These are supposedly hardened to about a 55 Rockwell, which is not the hardest uh, when it comes to a differentially tempered blade. They're usually about 58 to 60, but it's it's definitely good enough for cutting. It has a nice edge and it holds an edge, and if you need to, you can you can hone it back up with some stones or whatever. Um, the steel is a 1060 
high carbon, which again is in that medium range of steel that's good for you know that balance of flexibility versus hardness. So this is this is a tool that you can you could put to some stress. You can you could cut and abuse this and use this, and it's probably not gonna gonna bend or break that easily. There are a lot of reviews of Musashi katanas, even their even their really cheap Musha line, which is a 1045 steel. You'll see people abusing the hell out of them, and they they still cut, um, and they don't fail very easily. So this is this is a sword that'll last if your intention is to practice with it, and the geometry is good enough for EI or kata or whatever you're going to be doing with it that way. So as a, as an entry level sword for a practitioner, it's it's a good choice. The balance is good, the weight is good. Uh, like I said, the handle dyna dy dynamics, at least for me, are very comfortable. Uh, another example, really quick. Uh, this is a, a little bit harder to find. This is their Unakubi Zukiri, which I think I mentioned in another review. Handle, very, very similar. Um, this is this is not the guard that came on it. This is actually off a of Hanway Practical, just because I liked it better. The one that came on it... Um, it's supposed to portray the uh, the Chinese classic Journey to the West for you guys who are fans of, uh, what is it, the the new Legends of Monkey or whatever it is on, on Netflix. That's that's basically that story. But it's basically die-cast painted, so I couldn't get over that. So I took it off, and, and now it's a coaster. So, hey. Um, but I just happen to have this other guard from this other sword that, that fits it quite well. Um scabbard everything else is pretty much identical um the blade of course they went to the the trouble of putting in that cormorant's neck profile so you get that first uh, a little bit over a third is a standard katana with the bohi and then of course you've got that bevel that takes all the metal off the back and then it widens out just at the tip to give you some beef in the tip uh, again, very sharp. I uh, haven't had any problems cutting with it. Um, the the surface is pretty scuff resistant. It's it's a little bit, uh, you know, difficult to damage that way. So you don't have to feel bad cutting with it. And that's the thing for the price. You don't have to feel bad, you know, nicking it up and beating it up. This is a sword that's designed to be used. It's it's a tool. It's not you know the fanciest thing, but it's you know it's like going to, uh, you know, a retail store and picking up a you know a basic decent hammer you know it's not the best carpenter's hammer you're going to find but you know it feels all right in your hands you know you'll pick it for that and it seems to be a pretty good quality and it's probably going to last you forever um doesn't have to be the best hammer um another analogy that i would put to these would be uh, for those of you who are into firearms like i am take the take the retail price of your of your katana the msrp and multiply it by at least two so a $200 katana is about the equivalent of a $400 gun. Um, there are some good $400 guns out there. You know, I would think of brands such as Ruger or something like that. That they're not the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, well, you, you might disagree with that, but you know, they're going to work. They're going to be reliable. They're going to be tough. They're probably going to last a long time, and uh, they're probably going to surprise you by how good they feel. And um, it's kind of the same here. For the money, I wasn't expecting much, but what I got is, it, it's not stunning, but it's not bad. Let me show you a little bit of uh, of improvement in the product quality, too. Now, about 10, 12 years ago, and I've complained about this sword in other videos, this is in a similar series. Um, the fixtures on this are a lot fancier, but... I'll get into this in a different video. Whoever designed this, would they, they really had no intention of anybody actually holding this sword because it has so many sharp, uncomfortable edges. It's it's just ridiculous. Also, the uh, the fatness of the handle looks like it ate two other swords. It's 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 huge. It's almost completely round. My hand doesn't fit it very well, uh, so it's very uncomfortable to hold in a couple of different ways. And then compare that to. Um, it's got a tighter fit into the scabbard, which is something. Uh, a couple of other problems with it. The, um, the Hibaki, the modern Musashi swords, they'll, they'll brand themselves. They'll send you a certificate that tells you about the sword and kind of proves it's real. You get in a new Musashi box, which is another indicator you've got an authentic thing. But they'll just put Musashi 
in little tiny letters on, on the spacer on the SEPA. The older ones, you've got this really glaring, loud uh, brand logo on the Hibaki with Musashi in English, and it's it's like having Nike written on the side of it. It's it's really, I don't like it. I'm probably actually going to um, you know remove that in in a short period of time if I if I decide to you know reinvest some time and energy into this blade. But problems with the blade itself, they did a pretty good job in the first you know third of it because it, it has that uh, that standard, you know, Shinogi Zukiri. It's got a nice groove. It's got the double fuller, actually, because this is a, this is a Kokorasu Maru. But what happens is it starts with a decent amount of meat in, in the bottom end of the blade, but when they go to bevel it, they make it ridiculously thin to the point where this blade has a lot of flex. And I don't have a lot of confidence in it. And also, um, you know, I like a sword that's a little bit more handle heavy, but this is this is kind of ridiculous. Also, um, unlike other swords like this, it does have the real hammond on the um, the leading edge, the main edge, but the back edge is neither hardened nor sharpened. It's it's a fake back edge. There's there's nothing here. So this one. Uh, but like I said, this is this is a sign that they have improved their quality. And I would certainly recommend these to a practitioner, uh, whether you're looking for an entry-level sword without spending a ton of money, or if you're, you know, you're looking for a, a second sword that you can use because you've got something that's really nice and you don't want to beat it up or whatever. Or a sword, you know, if you if you practice with other people and you want to have like a loner so they can they can have something to uh, to play with today all good choices for these blades and and given the price you're you're not into it for a huge investment so i hope you found that helpful and we'll see you again